Okay, now I'm evening off the front of this set of antlers for the remount. They were really crooked. I mean, the guy, the guy who mounted this was a cuck-eyed asshole. So I not only had to even off the, along here, I have to even off along the bottom edge at the front. I have to cut in, in this way, okay? And that's what I'm doing now. And if it needs to be evened off more, I'll use my, uh, my belt sander. Now, this is how I cut antlers with this saw. I put it on a, a big board so that the saw doesn't get dulled by my steel table. Right, let me take a look at what I've got here now. Oh, that looks really good. That looks really good. That's a real good start. I'm going to even off the rest of it with my belt sander. Okay, now before I do that, as you can see, I have to even off the height from the front to back. This got this is crooked here. These these antlers were sitting on the form crooked, so it was not mounted correctly all the way around. All right, now I I use this bone saw always. I used to use a sawzall. I have more control with this saw here. So I will use this saw. Now I've got to try and go back straight. So it's going to be as even as possible with the saw. If it needs to be evened off after I trim this part, again, I'll use the uh, my uh, belt sander. Here. Bone trimmed away. Here's, what I, here's what I'm saying about the, the board. The, the saw is just going to hit the board and not the steel table, which will keep the blade good and sharp. There we go. We're through. Now, let me check to see how even it looks. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. That's looking nice and even now. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, these holes that were drilled in here are the only two holes that were drilled, period. They are too far back. I'm going to re-drill new holes here. Then I may drill a, uh, a hole. Oh, I, I may utilize these, but he needs holes drilled at the front to hold it down properly. Enlarge these holes a bit. Now, just for the hell of it, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to drill a couple more holes at the back of what's left of the skull plate. It looks like he hacked it off with a with a hatchet to get it to fit the form, which was too small. Yeah, I think. Yeah, this is a better idea. All right, the next thing I need to do is countersink these holes. All right, I got my countersink bit in my drill. I'm going to countersink these holes a little bit. Get the, uh, so how dark let's get the, uh, get the quick change yeah. bit in here, and get a smaller drill bit now to drill down into the head block. Just a little smaller. And I'm going to drill into the head block. Uh, this is the replacement cape I was able to purchase and get it wet tanned. Uh, it's got a nice dark crown. Uh, this is being mounted over a uh, research mannequins 
uh, uh, wall pedestal, seven and a half, nose to eye, 20 inch, 20 and a half inch around the neck, 23 a little further down, 26 down here. So this is what I'm going to, I'm going to set the, I'm going to make the seating on the head block first, determine where it's, where it has to sit, because there's a lot of head block, uh, skull plate missing. So I need to determine where it's going to sit on the head block proper. All righty, let's get him placed. And the way I determine where he's going to be is, like I say, this is a replacement cape. So I pull this up, see that it's going to get around the antler burrs, and make sure if there are any wrinkles, I'll pull the skull plate back a bit. Hold it in place, bring the sides up around, see if that eliminates any of the wrinkles. If not, I pull it back a little further and make sure that I'm not pulling the eye sockets too far back. And I need to look at it from overhead to make sure that now that I've squared up the front of the skull, I want to make sure that the front of the skull is squared with the front of the, of the head form where the antler sits. So this looks this looks pretty good right here. That looks pretty good. Has good relation to the ears too. And the ears are brought up at attention. Good relation to the ears. So this looks correct. Now I'm just going to pull the cape down a bit. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure I've got the setting where I want it. And I'm going to drill into the head block. Okay. One thing I noticed by visually looking at what I was doing is that the top of the head form here is much higher than what's left on the skull plate. So, in order to bring the skull plate up to proper height, I take a little wad of excelsior and that will be placed under the skull plate and adjust it. When I find I have the right amount of excelsior, like this amount right here, this will do perfectly. When I find I have just the right amount of excelsior, I'm going to mix this into some bondo. Then I'm going to hold everything in place till the bondo kicks off. This way I'll be able to get my angle on the, on the antlers. And I'm looking at photos of the deer when he was shot. So I do have a guide to go by. Normally I take measurements from the tip of the antlers to the tip of the nose, but I don't have that option in this case. I didn't have that luxury. But yeah, yeah, there's a lot of lower skull missing. And I think you could see that on here. There's a lot, there's a lot missing. So this is going to, this is going to take up the space. Okay, now I'm going to mix that into some Bondo and I'm going to re, reapply it. And that needs to be done before I can put any screws into the, into the head block. Okay, this bondo was a little on the stiff side, so I kneaded it together with my with my gloved hand, and I'm hoping I'm hoping it doesn't start sitting up on me now. But uh, I'm going to put his little brain ridge in, and now I'm going to hold the antlers in place until the stuff kicks in, which is happening, I think, as I speak. Ah. There we go. No, that's all right. That's okay. That's good, right there. That's good. Now just make sure it's even. Make sure it's set evenly, front to back, side to side. All right. I need to hold it until it sets. And I'm gonna form it a little bit while it's in its gummy state, or gummy bear state. Don't get the, avoid getting Bondo onto the hair, okay? That's the last thing you want to do is get friggin' Bondo in the damn hair. I mean, it'll come out, but it'll be a pain in the ass, and you don't need to. You don't need that. Now pushing it down in front, making sure it's even. Looking overhead here. This is starting to look real, real good here. Let me hold this for a second. I take this glove off. There's too much Bondo on the glove. Get rid of that. All right. Handle this one correctly here. 
They get the angle. I got a good angle going from the top of the skull to the top of the head form. Good angle there. Good reproduction there. And it's at the point where I can actually press at it with my finger, my bare fingers. It's not sticking to me anymore. And as soon as this sets, I'll be able to apply the screws. Now I'm probably going to make a little test. I'm going to put the, pull the cape up in a position here. Just to see how she lines up around. And we, we're good on this side. We're good on the right side. Real good on the left side too. All right. That's beautiful right there. Right there. Gorgeous. 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 All right. We get up here. Good. The eye socket is not being stretched. The eye socket's in a proper location. This is all good. This is all good right here. Man, this is real nice. This is real nice. This is real, real nice. I think my client's going to be real happy with this buckaroo. Like so. Here we go. All right. Now I got this. This the right eye is perfectly lined up to the socket. This is this is this this is beautiful right here. This is gorgeous right here. The the blend from the top of the form to the crest of the skull, and it's 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 really set up in there real nice. When this is fully set, I'm going to drill the holes down into the uh, the skull plate of the form. But for now, I'm just I think I'm just going to let this guy set. But that's what we got so far. I know he looks like a little he's like, like he's a little high. But I'm looking at the photos on this buck, and his antlers were sitting just a little high. Yeah, his antlers are coming up like so. I'm looking at the hand in this photo, so this is correct. This deer also had a broken face, which I'm not, I'm not going to reproduce because it, it really looked bad. The guy who mounted it before tried to do it for him, and all he did was he beat the shit out of the form with a hammer. And all he did was dinged it. And he didn't even use high pace when he mounted it, but it looked like crap. There are certain things, there are certain injuries that are best not to recreate. And a busted face is definitely up there with those that you do not want to recreate. He's going to have his ears forward at alert. This is going to look good. This is going to look good. My client is going to be very happy with this. Very happy. Because the deer is a hell of a lot bigger than the, than the form he than the, the mount he brought me. Hell of a lot bigger. That's nice. That's nice. All right, I've got one eight by three screw in here. Eight by three inch screw is already in the front. I'll put the second one in. Come on, baby. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta. Bring them out and reset them. There we go. All right. Other times, you're best to use a uh, a hand a hand screwdriver, a handheld screwdriver. Well, for now, I'm just going to put these two in. I'm going to play with them a little bit until they go all the way down. I back them out. Back it out. Now I don't want the hole in the in the the head block to be as large as the as the hole going through the skull. Otherwise, these big screws will not be tight enough. So we just got to work it a little bit. There it is, right down to the top of the skull, right down to the countersunk on the hole. Again, come on, baby. All right, last shot. There we go. He's in there. He's secure. Now, I'm gonna pull the cape up around here again. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, baby, that's nice. That's nice. Now, I'm not going to do the whole mounting as a video. I have a deer mounting video out there. Uh, I'll, I'll continue photographing this process. I need to make a couple of cape adjustments here. Got to bring them down a little bit. You got to bring them, fit them a little more to the mannequin, uh, the head form. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you, this stout ruffler makes a great cape come along. A great come along for capes. Especially deer, where well, their hair is dense enough and you're really not going to damage the skin underneath. Plus, there's no, there's no height paste. This is, this is a dry run. Literally a dry run. Just want to make sure all the features get lined up properly. This brisket, now this had a slip. Slip brisket, which is going to have to be so so enclosed. No big deal. It's basic taxidermy, folks. That's what needs to be done. You do what you got to do. Do 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 do. Now, make sure that I'm not pulling the eyes down. And I'm pulling this up here. Now, this may need to be trimmed a little bit. The cape may need to be cut away a little bit, right about here, just to get it up under this this part of the burrs to make sure it's tight. Well, I don't think I have to trim it so much as I'll glue it with a good epoxy adhesive. I still have to take the ear cartilage out, put in the ear liners and whatnot, all that good stuff. And I have to, of course, I have to build up the top of the head, the top of the uh, skull plate with uh, my mache. So, but here we are. Nice. Nice looking. Oh, that's going to be sweet. Oh, that's going to be so sweet. Take a picture. It'll last longer. Sweet. Here we are. That's nice. These uh, research mannequins head forms. It's called the Slim Face Series. First, I thought this the face might be a little thin for this guy, but I'll tell you the truth. You're dealing with unknowns. You're dealing with a rack, a cape from another deer completely, and um, measurements that were supplied to me by the gentleman I bought it off of. And he said it was seven and a half by 21, could go bigger. Thought about giving him a 22 inch neck, but I'll tell you, this 21 inch, this 20 and a half inch neck, it's plenty big, plenty big. Now I may, I may sculpt out the size of his face here a little bit. I may increase the size of the jowls. He's got really, this form has an excellent depth, nasal ridge to, to jawbone. This is an excellent depth on his face. You look, you see, that's a beautiful, beautiful depth right there. I want to make sure that the eye stays where it's supposed to be. There we are. There we are. Beautiful. That's beautiful. There is no eye there. I meant the eye socket. There is no eye there, per se. But yeah, there we go. Close his mouth. Tuck his lips. That's going to make a really pretty mount. A real pretty mount. For sure. Well, okay. We've got, uh, got him just temporarily pushed into position here, and uh, yeah, I think this face is going to work out just fine, just fine. The deer is going to be nice and big, the way he should be. You see here? It's going to be a nice, that's going to be a nice big mount that's going to honor, honor this man's buck, and he's going to be done the right way. This is just dry trial fitting, mind you, okay? And he looks pretty good the way he is right there. I'll tell you, tell you the truth. This trial fitting right now looks better than the mount that came in. 
So there. <laughs> Later. The best thing about dry fitting a cape to a form, son of a bitch stretches out like nobody's business. Stretches out like nobody's business. This thing is huge. Wasn't quite fully that big originally, but uh, oh god, yeah, he's he's way big now. Really, 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 really stretched out. And the nice thing too, if you leave it over the form, you leave it on the form for a couple of hours like that. Once the skin is stretched out, it will begin to relax over the form. When it relaxes onto the form. It will not be, it won't be, you won't find it necessary to restretch this cape again. It will, with hide paste, slide right on. As Dr. Ruth used to say, it would be well lubricated. Sorry. <laughs>